Hello, Mad Cappers. Welcome to another lesson in lovely hat making. And today we're going to build off our most successful hat, our summer sun blocker hat. And we're going to start learning how to make this brim, make this hat. And we will be making this hat before the summer, I promise. I'm going to show you today how to get started by teaching you how to make the fabulous brim. And we're going to use our beautiful little pop top hat. And we call it a pop top because it's topless. And it's topless because some people just don't like wearing a full hat because they feel they get too hot and it's too heavy. But this one is a breeze. The beautiful lining that we use in the brim is a fusible interfacing and it makes it light, makes it wrinkle resistant, and makes it perfect for ponytails, pools, suitcases, anything you want to do under the sun. It's a great hat for gardening and for golf as well. Now this hat, because of the way we make it, it's reversible. So you can make it plain on one side and pattern on the other but we're going to teach you how to finish off the edge of the bias. We learned how to put bias on our sun visor headband last week. This week we're gonna do the bias so that it's a full visible outside piece on the top and the bottom edge of this hat. Now the two edges are slightly different. The one at the top is smaller, but we're gonna cut them on an angle and that seam is not bulky. It just disappears beautifully into the edge of the hat and the bottom piece is slightly wider slightly longer those measurements will be in the description below as well as in the video while i'm cutting them out and we're going to sew it with our regular seam and we'll top stitch those two edges down as well And we're going to make good use of our steam iron with our summer projects and especially with this project today because we're using heat and bond to fuse two layers of fabric to make a beautiful brim that will be wrinkle resistant. This is my steam iron. It has a deep reservoir. There's a link for one below in the description that's similar and we'll use heat and bond. There's links for that too in the description below. It's a fusible adhesive that's going to push our two brim layers of fabric together beautifully hold it with this tight strong bond and also the bonus is it makes this wrinkle resistant i love it and i'm going to show you my technique for doing this and then it can be your technique too i've got two brims cut for two brim pattern pieces sorry for the brim one piece is larger and that's for the two layers of fabric on the outside and I recommend using cotton. I'm using cotton canvas in natural and an indigo denim. And the heat and bond layer is a little bit smaller all the way around so that it fits inside one of those pieces of fabric when we do the first stage of adhering it. And then we don't get that adhesive on our iron or on our pressing pad. One side has a paper backing and that's the side that we've used to trace our pattern outline onto. And I also want to show you my brand new wool pressing pad. It's a beauty. It's 18 inches by 36 inches and it fits nicely in a king size pillowcase. But this also is very helpful. It adds an extra bit of heat on the underside. Your iron is adding heat on the top, but it actually pushes the heat back on the underside and I, I find it helps a lot removing wrinkles from cotton. So I'm going to give everything a press before I get started. And I'm just going to outline my brim onto the natural canvas. Give the denim a press and I'll cut those two pieces out at the same time so they're exactly the same all the way around. Now comes the fun part. We're going to put the heat and bond onto what would be the back side of our canvas. Although the canvas is the same on both sides in this case, 
if we were using the indigo denim on the top of the hat, then we would see definitely a back side, and that's the side we would use. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit of extra because I don't want any of that adhesive to end up on my pillowcase cover or on my iron. And that's the reason why I've made a separate pattern piece for the heat and bond so that it's smaller on both edges and on the ends. And I'm using a light touch and a light uh, heat on my iron just to hold that on. It's in place. And now I'm going to sew the back seam of my top piece of my brim together at the back, right sides together. And I don't want to sew over the paper. So if you find that your paper is coming close to the end, then when before you adhered it with the iron, you should trim it a little bit. I will have a, a bit of a challenge here though. I'm just going to finger press it flat. And then I see that my paper is underneath one side and I'm going to lift it up a little bit and you'll see why in a minute. I'll give it a little bit of a pressing, but not too much. Now, the way that I do this is I'm going to take now my second brim piece, my under brim, and I want to attach it to one side of that flat back seam from the upper piece, from the canvas. So that's why I need to lift up this paper a little bit because I don't want to sew over the paper because that paper is going to come off after I make that stitch. And I'm just going to sew straight across like a top stitch, but I'm sewing over top of that flat back seam from the canvas and I'm sewing the wrong sides together. So I am looking at the right side of my indigo and I've made that seam and that's what it looks like on the other side. And now I'm going to finish taking off the paper and I'm just going to work my way around once all that paper is off. And that's how your heat and bond should look, a little bit shiny. And it is adhered onto the back of the canvas, which is great. And I'm just going to work around the brim now and just work that denim piece. And clip or pin at the edge. And I'm working it around so that denim piece is going to lie flat against the canvas even though since I've sewed the back seam it makes the canvas a little like makes the brim a bit of a three-dimensional problem it certainly would be easier to do if it was all flat but then you wouldn't have this lovely way of closing up at the back that looks very neat and tidy so we're going to slowly now go around with the iron we'll do about a quarter at a time and take out the clip as we go. Now we're gonna come back and go around again. So just start this first, um, this first stage just by making sure that everything looks fairly flat. And then for that last quarter, we're at the point where we have an overlap at the back of the indigo. And we're gonna just fold it over to make a nice finished edge and just work it with your fingers so that it's it's parallel to the other seams and it you're going to want a top stitch so you want it to be a top stitch that's similar to the top stitch that's already there when you sewed the other end onto the canvas and now we're going to go around and we'll just make sure that we're all fused and we'll get rid of any little air bubbles we want a good bond between those two layers of fabric. And the nice thing about heat and bond is it doesn't add any weight or any stiffness to the, the brim, but it certainly does help reduce wrinkling. And then while it's still warm like that, it's easy to correct these little mistakes too. And I just check both sides as I go to make sure that everything looks great.
Now, using a little scrap, a little off cut of my heat and bond, I'm just gonna cut a piece that's gonna disappear behind that little tab that I have. And it's just gonna hold it in place so that when I do my top stitch, my fabric isn't gonna pucker up or, or you know, create a wrinkle after I've spent so much time making a beautiful wrinkle-free brim. Now I'll just peel off the paper backing. And give it a nice press and take it over to the sewing machine and do a nice top stitch to match the other top stitch. And just sew that closed. And here I am at my machine and I'm just gonna work along that edge that's turned over my folded, my folded under raw edge that has a nice press crisped edge and it's got a new top stitch now holding it all down, hiding all those raw edges and making a beautiful back seam. And of course, the finishing touch, my Madcap Hats label because I'll be selling this. Now the band part of our hat, of our pop top, does not require a lot of printed fabric to make a real wow statement. So it's a great way to use up all the small pieces left in your stash. And who doesn't love dragonflies? And to do the bands now for our pop top, we're gonna back each piece with this medium weight, one side fusible, non-woven interfacing. And I would even put it on this cotton linen on our website we sell this hat with those beautiful butterflies and that's a quilting weight so i will use it on that as well and i will use it on the back of the denim piece too because on this particular hat it's going to be all denim on one side and then on the other side we'll have a lovely print with a bit of denim two looks in one and i'm giving this denim a steam and these beautiful country flowers of steam and getting ready to adhere the medium weight fusible interfacing onto the wrong side of both pieces and I folded my fusible interfacing in half so that the sticky side is facing out and it's on the back side of both of those two pieces of fabric that are going to be my band. I'm multitasking folks. I'm going to iron them all at once. And I like to cut my bands out at, together when I have two pieces like this so that they are the same, just like the brims. And I will just put a little pin in it and I'm going to sew those two back seams closed with my usual seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Now there's several ways to do our bias edge for the top and it's 23 and a half inches on each edge. And a little bit more than three and a half inches. So it's three and five eighths inch deep. And then both ends are cut on that angle. So in centimeters, that would be 60 centimeters along those each of those long edges and 93 millimeters deep. You want your long edges to be along a 45 degree angle in relation to the edge of your, the salvage edge of your fabric. And you can use your quilting ruler for this as well. So I'm going to sew right sides together for my edge. And I'm sewing right sides together for my band. And the top of our hat is those three pieces. And if you notice that the band pieces have a slight curve to them, so it tapers off towards the top of your head. And we will have a full sewing pattern available soon so that you can buy um, a, a pattern that has full written instructions that reference back to this video in the small, medium and large adult sizes. 
the size that's on our website and the size I'm doing right now is our average adult head size, which is 22 and a half inches in head circumference or about 57 and a half centimeters. And I'm using my handy dandy magnet seam guide to make sure my seams are perfect. So right sides together and I'm doing the outside band first. So I'm going to do right sides with the canvas and the beautiful little garden flower print. And I'm gonna sew that on to that inside raw edge of our, of our brim. And I'll just take my time going around making sure that I'm working it in, easing it in, that they fit perfectly or almost perfectly. And I'm working with the brim on the top because that's the piece that's got the most fusing so it's less likely to stretch out of shape. And I'll just go around and I'm going to clip on the inside of that seam every two and a half, three centimeters, four centimeters, one and a half inches, all the way around just to help to ease the next piece in and re remove some of the stress on that uh, inner curve, on that inside edge. And I forgot to mention that I did cut a center notch on the two band pieces at the top and the bottom and I just are matching up those notches together at the center front of the um, of the brim at the top and the bottom. We don't need to worry about notching our bias piece however. We'll ease that in as we go along but now we are going to just close up the top with a very um, nice little seam right at the at the edge or close to the edge quarter inch in it'll get buried in the bias but it just helps us when we're working on this next step and i pinned together the two angled ends of my top bias piece together right sides together and i'm sewing them together and i'll just top stitch that uh, seam flat so up one side pivot and come back down the other side with the seam in the middle and now I'm going to try and match this up with pins and I'll pin further down at, towards that folded edge because I'll be working on that raw edge that's where all my seams are going to be and I'm going to do a quick um, close to the edge seam all the way around just to, to sew that together. It's a lot easier to work with if you've got that edge sewn together. Now I do use my serger when I'm making the hats, but I thought I always use the serger when I'm showing you how to make a hat. So this time I'll use a sewing machine and you don't need a serger. And I'm just going to work it in all the way around and pin it. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do two seams. So one is about a, a quarter of an inch or six millimeters down just to sew it onto the hat. And now I'm going to adjust my magnet measure and my seam is going to be just a little bit more than my usual three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. It's not going to be a half just a little outside, just a little bit narrower than a half inch. And once you do a couple of these, you'll sort of figure out what is the best size of seam. And I'm gonna turn it over. I'm rolling that folded edge over into the denim side of the hat. And I wanna do a neat job because this hat is reversible. So the edge should be lovely on both sides but I do like having that finished folded edge on the outside of the hat because I consider the hat with the, the part of this hat with the flowers to be the outside. I think most people will probably wear it that way, but it's nice to have a choice. And my magnet seam guide comes in handy for doing this last step for this top piece of 
finishing touch bias edge. And I actually, I don't know if you saw me, but I actually put a smaller magnet behind my big magnet because I'm pushing up it a lot. I'm applying a lot of pressure to make that perfect seam. So there were three seams involved in attaching the bias and then one seam to close up the top, all at the top of that hat. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but on the bottom of the hat. So our edge is actually a piece of indigo denim that is 35 and a half inches on the length of each edge or 90 centimeters and it's four inches deep or 10 centimeters deep. So um, you may have to cut it in two pieces and if you do that, maybe make them equal and have those two seams on the side of your um, pop top. If you're using wide fabric, like I usually do, I think most of my fabrics that I use for my hat brims are at least um, 55 inches or 60 inches wide, or at least 144 centimeters wide. So I can usually make uh, one cut and I usually keep a piece of fabric set aside. Once I've made one bias cut, I just sort of work from that edge to cut the subsequent bias edges. As you'll see as we go forward that I do quite a few hats with this finishing touch. And I like this edge because it really lets you be flexible. You can wear this brim with the brim down. You can wear it turned up. You can wear it turned up at the side like a cowboy hat. This edge really gives you lots of options. So I've just sewn it on uh, very close to the edge, about a half an inch or six millimeters. And now I'm going to set my magnet guide for about a half inch. Because this is a little wider than the one at the top, we can go a little bit wider with that second seam that joins it to the bottom of the hat. Oh, and also I am working then in the opposite. I'm putting the uh, first two stitches working from the inside of the hat so that my folded edge is going to wrap around over the top of the hat and be on the outside. And that is because most of the time this edge is, is turned up so that fold is sort of not so visible and it makes a nice clean edge when the brim is turned up. But again, we're gonna do a neat job and this time we're gonna use four seams to attach it. So I'm going to go around once close to the edge using my magnet guide and my extra little magnet to give it more support. And I'm working again about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my brim to do my first seam or six millimeters. The width of my presser foot and my magnet is pressed right up against my presser foot. And I'm going all the way around and now I'll make it a little bit wider. So back further into the hat. And I still wanna catch the um, part of, of my bias edge that's underneath. So I don't want to go any wider than what I'm working on that's already folded underneath. And I'm just going to go slowly around with a double stitch on the edge and it's looking good. And you can do a double stitch at the top too if you'd like. I feel you don't need to. And there you have it folks we have a pop top and we have our mad cappers that now know the first basic step in building a sun blocker and i'm gonna make another one there it is voila i hope you've enjoyed this video leave us a like leave us a comment leave us a question but consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. We are just getting started. 36 years of hats to share with you. Lots of lessons to teach you. You're going to be hat makers, milliners, hat lovers, hat wearers before I'm finished with you. Thanks so much for watching. You can leave us a super thanks if you like the free distribution of patterns. We will see you again soon. Happy sewing. Bye.